let Nunu get through for Cyanide. And that's the weird thing, is that Cyanide on his Nunu, he's missed so many smites, unfortunately for him. So it's kind of a little bit of a trade-off, but I mean, we know we know Cyanide. Maybe it's just like a fluke in that day where he is like one of the best smite stealers in the game. Um, so don't let him play that. Don't let him play something that's a little bit comfortable to him, and let's we'll see what's going to be around out next. Yeah, three quarters of the games that they've played with Nunu in the line, they've won as well. So, it, you know, statistically strong champion mm -hmm. to take out. We all know how good Nunu is right now on the uh, 3.8 patch. Uh, Twisted Fate taken out. We don't want no uh, Twisted Fate there for XPK. <laughs> uh, they've got bad memories, of course, of not just Twisted Fate, just back doors in general. They're just not a fan of when it comes to uh, <laughs> playing against Fnatic. We'll see what Fnatic actually ban out here finally. Obviously, they've put one ban towards uh, Herkubot, one towards Kevin, and the final one will actually go towards Nif there with that Thresh. No, I think if SK could ban one summoner spell right now as their last like ban, I think they would take away Teleport to stop any potential ganks coming in that way because XPK, he's actually kind of switched around and how he plays. He's been running Teleport lately, and it's been actually working out well for him. Um, yeah. So we're going to see what SK bans out here. But the Thresh, we know Nif. Like he, he, if he lands a hook, they just collapse and kill him every time. So don't let him play something that exactly once says, I'm not going to believe that one, but I was <laughs> 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 on his face. Perfectly timed there. <laughs> we switch over to Soaz, who of course had Teemo selected for a little while. Not going to be Teemo, but at least is a definite for him. He's won three out of four games here in the spring split, in the summer split, sorry. Uh, but the spring split is obviously where he really put up the numbers there, having pretty much a 100% win ratio with him. Uh, on the other side now, it's looking like SK possibly going to go for a rumble. A champion that Kevin has gone with, we've been seeing less and less and less. Uh, uh, the final one being really key there, because we've really not seen much mm -hmm. rumble whatsoever ever here in Europe. The one game he did play it though, um, the split, he stomped so hard. Like we, I remember him back in yeah. the spring split, it was to me his best champion. You saw him playing it uh, against Gambit in particular, I can think of where he would just constantly push that top lane over and over, making Gambit deal with him. But it looks like he's actually not gonna be going for it here, Joe. No, gonna be going in for a Lissandra here. Uh, and also Nami gonna be picked up for Nif. Uh, has obviously played Nami before two games, lost both of them here. So not maybe the uh, the best of luck for uh, for SK so far to have this Nami in the team. But let's see what Fnatic go for you. Because on the jungle side of things, you know, Udi has gone, Nunu has gone out of there. Uh, so, you know, the likes of Jarvan, in my opinion, are going to be big in this game. That's Yeah, that's exactly what I was just thinking. Because Herkibot is a big Jarvan player, but so can Cyanide. And neither of the teams have really locked that in right away. And seeing the at least picked from Fnatic as their first pick, I don't really think Lissandra need to be picked right away because usually it was Soas playing Lissandra, then XPK would uh, combo in with something else. But a jungler would definitely be a good move for them right now. They don't necessarily need to pick a support, but they obviously can. The good thing is about picking Lissandra now, though, is of course the SK have last pick. So that Lissandra could go in the top or the mid lane, depending on what Fnatic go with. Uh, so we are going to be seeing Varus Sona locked in here. Fnatic decided they want to get that combo uh, in there as early as they mm -hmm. possibly uh, can before SK actually uh, go in on that front. Yellow Star uh, won both games that he's played so far with Sona. Same story for Pushu on Varus. Yeah, so I mean. We have right now oh, over on SK side where the Nami doesn't, they haven't really won on that just yet, but then you have two uh, champions where Fnatic has won 100% so far. So in terms of that, it looks like Fnatic is going to be looking good, uh, pretty good in this game. But, you know, SK, they can always catch you off guard. It looks like potentially Candy, Candy Panda would go for Vayne, which we did see yesterday. He was 3-0, and zero, but unfortunately, the rest of his team wasn't doing too well, and he kind of yeah. wasn't able to do the damage. He was forced into a very early uh, QSS, but the enemy rise just completely shut him down either way. And Herkubot might lock in Lee Sin here. Now, this is actually a incredible thing to see because Herkubot, you know, the times where Diamond was playing uh, Lee Sin in the jungle, Herkubot was probably the second best Lee Sin yeah. player around. He was known uh, at that time as a fan, as an incredible Lee Sin player. So we're going to see him bring that out here today. Uh, obviously, Jarvan just being completely ignored uh, up until this point. We'll see if Cyanide actually decides to go from that one. He's got a 50% win ratio uh, with Jarvan at, at this stage of the uh, summer split. And he is hovering over that Jarvan right now. Twitch, as well as Virus, I don't see them. Hmm. I'm just trying to think if they could run one of those in the solo lane, but... I wouldn't be as strong as maybe like an Ezreal or obviously a Caitlyn, but it looks like he's just toying around with a couple of different champions. But I'm try I've been trying to think ever since you mentioned Herkibot on Lee and I remember us casting his EPS or something back in the day. I don't remember what team he was on necessarily, but wow, he was phenomenal on it. And with everyone bringing him back, we're seeing Aranea play him. We saw Dexter play him. We even saw Diamond play him once. Obviously, it didn't work out yeah. too well for him. I'm curious to see how well he's been keeping his Lee Sin going. Well, Fnatic here locking in that Jarvan. 
and also a Rise picked up for this one. I think that's a fairly safe pick at this time, knowing that SK could bring a different champion into that middle lane because they can technically move that Elise into mm -hmm. the mid lane as well and have Rise in the top, depending on you know, which matchup they really want to be going for in this. So let's see what SK go for as their final pick. And you now we talked about how Oslo always likes to leave that, that pick for him until last. Yesterday, we actually saw them do that differently. And against the, and against Meet Your Makers in the week before as well, they actually picked it halfway through. But it looks like they're going to be returning to that now that they're on the red side here and going for a possible Orianna last pick. She's been playing a lot of Orianna lately. And I kind of want to touch on the Rise real quick before this gets locked in because Rise is a really good counter to Vayne. Just because you're mid-range, you've got the same spell range versus her auto attack range. So you can lock her down. And if Vayne can't move around, can't kite, then she's easy to kill. And especially with the whole lineup that Fnatic has. But it looks like that Orianna does get locked in here. So it's not going to be on this pretty much famous Orianna. And I'm actually trying to think, because I don't know if this works, but if you put the ball on the Sandra and she uses her, uh, her initiate, her E to get in, does it stick with her? Yeah. Huh, so that, that is a possibility I for believe, a ball delivery system. I am saying that. I'm, I'm, I'm believing in myself here on I this one. I believe so. You're the Rhythmist guy, yeah. so you know you should be telling me the answer to this one. Uh, but we're going to find out about that one. Kevin obviously playing this Lissandra in the top lane. It's going to be Ryze versus Oriana in the middle. Xpeke is going for teleport right now. And you know, if you think back to halfway through roughly of that spring split where Alexic had a, a bit of a phase with mm -hmm. Ryze where he'd always run that teleport with him. And, he was always, you know, ward at the back of the team when they were fighting and just coming in from the other side and really causing some problems with that teleport rise. We'll see if uh, they can go about it here as well as a bit of a cheeky grin there from Sinai just before we get underway. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, we, we've been seeing a lot of people switching over to teleport middle. Like Charu kind of is, been, is creating like a, a, a fad here by everyone <laughs> running it because it's so strong, but it's really interesting to see how different people use it differently. So there's like kind of two things that have really come through with it. So one of them is you be really aggressive early on, you make ganks happen in lanes. The other version of it is you keep it for more late game where you can get that split push pressure on and then try, uh, kind of join the fight a little bit later. So I expect that he's been more towards the former of those two, really trying to interact quite a bit. And I wonder if he's going to keep doing that here. <laughs> Well, we're going to find out here in just a short time as we start to load ourselves up into the game. Ocelot, by the way, today not wearing a scarf. I'm not sure if that's uh, more to do with the fact that it's absolutely boiling in Cologne right now or the fact that he's ditched this whole scarf thing uh, <laughs> going forward and said, you know what, without the scarf, maybe we're going to be stronger in this one. But uh, well, well, it's we'll like, have to see about it. It's like RNA said, you know, when he doesn't wear his belt, they win games. So maybe if he doesn't wear a scarf, they're going to win some games. We're only going to find out. I think out. it's a placebo thing, but I'm not sure about yeah. that one. Uh, we are going to be jumping into game here. Nonetheless, though, you can see their SK gaming on your screen. All concentrated here, looking for a victory against Fnatic. But they, of course, have a bit of a woeful record in this El Clasico matchup. They've picked up just that single victory for 19 losses. And they'll be hoping that it doesn't move to 20 here today. I don't know. I don't think Asa would agree with that. Because in his mind, they're stopping Fnatic. They're, they're stopping one Fnatic. Zero they're 1-0, yeah. Zero, yeah. So <laughs> we'll see what happens as you heard in the video. But, I mean, you're definitely right. 19-1, to one, that is such a huge... I don't know, a like confidence booster to Fnatic, but then again, SK picking up that win two weeks ago has to make them want this game even more to show that, yeah, we can consistently beat you, Fnatic. And right now, the group at the bottom here, and looks like Yellowstar is just going to ward up and head towards that top side, so he, he will be safe here. That ward could actually be key here, depending on what SK Gaming decide to do, and they're actually going to walk over the top of it. So, as I said, very, very key ward there. They know exactly where SK are, but look at this. SK, they've not put a single ward down on the entire map up until now. Obviously, uh, the only man with wards now at this point is going to be Nip, the support player, so we'll see exactly what Fnatic decide to do. They see... SK now headed back over the top of that wood. They see them stood right on top of it. Uh, oh, SK man. have no idea where, SK, uh, where Fnatic are. Oh, this is going to be so deadly right here. Like, we can see a major fight break out. And honestly, I don't know which team will be strong in the situation if they do go for it. But this will give one team such a, a huge lead if they do go for it. And if they actually back away, if Kenny Panda and Nifer are backing away to go towards top lane, then that would mean only three members would be sitting at this red. And that was an easy triple kill. Well, Kevin is going to recall. I was just waiting for that one to actually uh, finish happening right there. Fnatic are still waiting. 
SK have put a ward down here on that top side. So they're actually going to see Fnatic coming around for this one. The good thing for Fnatic is that they're probably going to secure this buff. SK are retreating completely. And the thing is, it actually stops Herkubop from counter jungling Cyanide. And also gives Cyanide a little bit of an early advantage just because he already is at his buff. He's already going to be able to take it. But I want to see how will Herkubop interacts early on because, I mean, we've seen Arna play quite a bit where he loves to be very aggressive early, make plays happen. But then we've also seen some games where if you shut down Elise Sin or even Evelyn like we saw last game, then he has a really hard time interacting. Yeah, a big amount of help there. We can see the SOAS uh, statistic that I pointed out earlier on. 75% win ratio with that Spider in the top lane going up against Lissandra, another champion that SOAS has already played here um, in this summer split. Uh, and just a point here as well, Yellow Star sporting the, the Muse Sona scheme, which is soon <laughs> to be retired. So make sure you get oh, really? hands on that one. That's interesting. And I think what's even funnier is that Yellow Star used to be the ADK for SK, and now you have Nif battling him out as support here. So it's kind of a little bit funny to see what happens. But as you see with their SK, a good start to their trade. Yeah, good start for that one. Puts you taking quite a lot of damage. You've just seen uh, Herkubot actually getting his red buff up. And we see Jarvan waiting in the wings as we are going to see them going in on towards Kevin. Are they going to be able to actually finish him off? And that's the beauty of that Lissandra, the mobility that she has. And if Sane waited like half a second longer, he actually might have been able to see Herkubot come right through that trap, which pick up a kill, but a nice bubble lands on Pushu. Yeah, Pushu in trouble from this one. He's actually going to be forced to burn his barrier, but look at Candy Panda. He goes low. He's used barrier. Flash away from both. Yellow Star going to flash in, but he missed it. He didn't actually time his auto attack there well enough. And Yellow uh, Candy Panda is going to get away. And look at Nip. He's hammering away on Yellow Star right now. Candy Panda, a little bit scared of getting in, especially now as Xpeke going to teleport down to this bottom lane. There's a tumble away from from Candy Panda, and there was a whole lot of action and no kills. <laughs> yeah, and I expect a burning that teleport, and we talked about him trying to be very aggressive, that likes to make a lot of plays happen right now, and unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. And there's another statistic from Ocelot's Oriana. Picked up five times, only a 40% win ratio, though. Not the uh, greatest of statistics uh, for that one, so I'll have to see how this game goes for him. I'll see El Clasico, whilst it means technically the same as every other game in the league. It's Fnatic versus SK. This game means a whole lot more. Yes, it's yeah, it definitely does, especially to the people who are playing this game, considering the long history between the two. But so far, we actually have a nice CS lead for Ocelot, considering Xpeke did use that teleport and did have to leave lane. And we do see Sonai, he's sticking around. He wants to make something happen on Ocelot. And you see him, he's hugging that top side right now because he knows that Herkubot's right there. And he knows if he does need to get out from a gank, he has a safety net. Yeah, I'd say a bit of damage exchange between the two mid laners. Herkubot just coming in, giving Ocelot that extra bit of shield. Force XPK to stop attacking him. AD carries, they've been very, very lively in this one. As Ocelot again takes a burst from XPK. Offers a little bit back up there. And it's a bit of a back and forth, this bottom lane, uh, this middle lane. Herkubot did just come down, but with the retreat there of Fnatic, it's pretty clear that he's gone over a ward. Well, the thing is, he saw uh, Sane coming down from middle through a ward over by the red bush. So he knew that Sane would try to go for a bottom lane gank. So he just getting there for, in preparation. But so has been very aggressive on his, uh, Kevin here. Trying to go into onto him, but I don't think he's got the damage. That cocoon might change things up, though. It's a good portion as Ignite goes in as well. So as is going to flash for this one, but is he going to be able to turn things around? Kevin thought about coming back in onto this one, and in the end, someone has burnt across the board, but no first blood. Wow, and that was <laughs> a really aggressive flash. So I was almost dying under that turret, but obviously he was able to escape here, and with having no flash up right now, Perky about to come around the side to go for a gank. An Ocelot, Annex Pekka there again. Just facing off in that mid lane, and uh, Ocelot's winning out in terms of the farm as Herkubot comes across there onto Soaz, gets a cocoon for his pleasure, and well end up just backing away from it. But uh, the big, there's a big disparity there in the farm. A 10, 12 CS uh, lead already carving itself out for Ocelot. Yeah, it, I was looking at items too, is that Xpeka, he didn't go for any sort of mana or mana regen item as his first, uh, you know, buy coming into the lanes, which you typically will see on a rise. He went for boots because he wanted to be able to dodge the ball coming out of Ocelot, but that means his tier is going to be a little bit more delayed, his cows is going to be a little bit more delayed, and Ocelot can use that to his advantage. If Herkubak could come in for a gank, that could be that first blood. Lots of ifs and buts right now. This game's staying very, very entertaining at the start. Bushu once again puts that a bit of damage on towards Candy Plan. And these two have been pretty volatile in this bottom lane up until now. As Herkubot once again visits 
that top leg. Cyanide going to get into the brush as well. So this could end up being a two-on-two -two encounter as a lot of damage comes into so as the Q from Hercule will actually missing. As we see, Cyanide going to be falling uh, into the middle of the pack. So as has gone very low here. He needs to be careful about when he comes back into it as the ultimate gets used on towards Cyanide. He has to flash away as Hercule Bot gets in there as well. They've locked up so as last second repel comes out. Well, they won't be able to save it and he might go down here as well. Q has connected. Hercule Bot goes flying under the turret. He oh, waited what? for the last hit on Kevin. I don't know why he didn't go in there. He waited for Kevin to get the turret aggro before he followed up the Q. Why? <laughs> I'm so confused why that just happened. But either way, they still get first blood. They still get two kills. But you did see that kill go over to Cyanide. And wow, Kevin getting so lucky right there. Hitting level six while chasing them yeah. down. Being able to use the ultimate on Cyanide and eventually being able to pick up the kills. Yeah. We always like to say that that was definitely calculated from Kevin, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, in the heat of the moment, sometimes you do hit level six just as it happens to count for you. Uh, but that is a nice couple of kills. So obviously, they did die in the end. Picked up second Doran's blade. Actually, uh, sorry, Doran's rings there. And I think he started Crystalline Flask there as well. Uh, yes, he did, because I saw that earlier in the team, and he was only Nif with wards when I looked. So started with a Crystalline Flask, double Doran's ring. He went in. That's how my brain works sometimes. I have to go through the steps. Uh, and a Negatron <laughs> cloak coming out as well. But Hurricane is trying to go for some counter drilling right here. They do see Sanad right there, currently sitting on that ward. And Sanad doesn't know. They do just kick him away, and he does smite and take it. So good job to keep that away from Sanad. Or more importantly, keep it away from Xpeke, because a rise with blue buff, that's pretty much a necessity on him for him to stack his tier, which he have. And it seems a bit flustered there in that mid lane, Xpeke. We just saw him missing a couple of CS. That's something that you can't afford to be doing right now. He's uh, fell behind to 22 CS, actually, uh, of that of Ocelot, who's now going to be getting a blue buff of his own. And SK will be thinking, well, that's a very nice little step on that front. Obviously, top lane, uh, we did see Soas go down once, got an assist uh, after that death of Kevin. But, you know, his opponent's got more farm and he's got that kill in there. And with that Negatron Cloak, so I shouldn't be able to really kill him now. Yeah, definitely shouldn't be able to burst him at all. And SK, they've had, honestly, a very strong start just from that uh, blue butt being taken away. But so as he's sitting towards the top side here, and Kevin, he's not going to go for a fight, but I don't know. I feel like something's going to break out really soon that's going to just cause a lot of kills to come in. Monkeybot getting himself that red buff as well. If we look down some of the items, let's look at the AD carries because despite that crazy start to the game, they've actually been pretty quiet from that as you just saw Peke teleport in so as to not, much, uh, not miss as much as he could in that mid lane. He's now got that tier working up, also got the Catalyst in there as well, so he's going to have that extra every time that he levels up to keep him a little bit safer in this lane. Of course, working his way up towards that typical Rod of Ages. Uh, but back to the AD carries where I was trying to get out from. Uh, BF saw Double Doran's Blade coming out for Pushu's Varus. Compare that over to the Double Doran's Blade Dagger and the Vamp Scepter for Candy Panda. Looks like Candy Panda will be going for that Build Rod of Cutlass into that Blade of the Rune King as Sanad did come in for a gank here, but to be honest, Sonic hasn't been really super effective just yet in any of his ganks. Obviously, we did see top lane where he came in a little bit too late, which ended up costing him and his, uh, his partner's life. But I don't know. I mean, Hercubot hasn't also been that effective at, uh, yet either, but he is coming around bottom here. Looks like he might potentially want to go in, or maybe he's just trying to counter gank Cyanide. Well, and they are going to manage to bubble up here onto one Candy Panda. Going to get caught up in the chain of corruption as a crescendo comes across. Hercubot goes flying to push him. It's a big mess. He kicks him out. That's a kill for Candy Panda. That was a cataclysm down by Cyanide, but he'll have to quickly cancel that one out so the rest of his team could actually get away. And that will be another one for zero coming out. A brilliant move from Hercubot to get that kick on to push you back into his team. And in that fight, Cyanide actually knocked Hercubot up while he was queuing to push you. So he didn't get the extra damage from that. And obviously it didn't matter anyways as Hercubot just flashed behind it and kicked it, but wow, that was really great timing. And it looks like they're going to be able to pick up a dragon off of this, and that's what they have to do. SK, I mean, if they can get a kill, uh, get a gank off, and then just go for objective right after, they're going to get a really nice strong lead that they already currently have in all their lanes. I just saw Cyanide at the back put a ward in there and think about, you know, his usual Cyanide-esque uh, steals, but <laughs> that didn't quite work out for him this time, and they decided to leave it in the end. So SK picking up the first dragon of the game. They have... 3.1 thousand gold, dude. It's not quite the almost 10k that we had, I think, at this stage uh, between uh, in our last game where we saw Gambit going down uh, to a very informed um, looking NIP. As Pushu, you're going to get caught out in the bottom lane anyway. Candy Panda gets himself a second kill. And I like I like seeing a lot of uh, different people play similar champions. For instance, Herkibot. 
He's playing Lee Sin, which we've seen a couple different builds, but it usually revolves around that Razor coming in and then following up with that Ruby Sidestone. But he went straight for that Spirit of the Ancient Golem. He went straight for that tanky uh, tankiness, so he doesn't have as much damage behind him, but let's see how it's going to work out for him. And yeah, Candy Panda, great job by him. Now two kills up. The thing is, he's ahead in CS. He's ahead in kills. He's going to become so hard for Fnatic to deal with, but luckily for them, they do have that Rise. They do have that Jarvan. And even, to be honest, just a whole team full of CC to lock him down. Yeah, and that's not what you want to see on a Vayne, uh, uh, obviously, is if you've got Vayne in your team. But uh, <laughs> for their opponents, if a Fnatic side of things, 20 CS in lead, two kills to his name. That's very, very dangerous here. We're only 12 minutes into this game as well. So, so I'm still lying about 10 CS behind that of Kevin. Is Herkubok going to come in? They lock him up with the ultimate. Can they get the finisher? There's the kick. A repel comes down. The Soas trying to get away from this one, but Kevin going to finish him off. Great job by Herkubok just to wait around long enough for him to come into lane and pick up the kill. They're going to push this turret now. It's 5-1 to one currently for SK, doing a great job. And, you know, going back to that vein real quickly, as we do see Kevin taking some damage from Xpeke, but I don't think they're going to admit to this, is that Candy Pennant was 3-0 yesterday on his vein, but they still ended up losing, unfortunately. So we can't get ahead of ourselves just yet, but with the way SK's playing, just around the map entirely with picking up Dragon, going for some damage on the turrets with the ganks they've been pulling off, they're playing pretty damn good. They are looking very, very strong. And this is a determination from SK. Actually, uh, we shared a ride home with them last night. And now, it was very kind of solemn, uh, that mm -hmm. whole ride home, very quiet. Uh, and, you know, that's that's what SK do. You know, they don't talk too much after a game. It's a, it's a go home, let's think about this, let's prepare properly for the next game that's going to be coming up. And right now, looks like they've been doing fantastic work overnight because they're looking in a different class today. And the thing is, what's really weird is that Ocelot's usually the person that's vocal about it to us saying, you know, I'm going to get home, I want to practice, I want to look what happened, and I look at the demo, see what went wrong. But it was Nif. He was in the back of the, of the car and I heard him saying, like, that he asked if he wants to go out at all. And he's like, no, I just want to go home, I want to get better. Like, I want to get better, and that sign of, of Nif just stepping up doing that is phenomenal. Yeah, and shown as well, he's number one rank on the EUS solo queue right now, and not bad for a support to be, yeah. getting, to be getting up there on that one as well, doing a fantastic job. Let's uh, get back into that mid lane action, obviously. Not seen too much of it, and we've had a switch as well. Since that death in the top lane, Soaz, I think, got bored of being ganked, and has come down to this middle lane to try and get himself some extra farm there. Uh, he's put, obviously, Xpeke then into the top lane to go up against Kevin's Lissandra. I think Darian's watching this, like, tired of being ganked. You're only 0 2. I was like 0 and 7 at this point <laughs> in the game. So, but yeah, Susan so switched up. He wants to get a little bit of free farm here, and it's going to help out quite a bit, but. Okay, what's he going to build towards? It looks like he actually will go for his Rada Aegis first. Herkibot, he's waiting on the backside. But remember, they did see that ward go down. And he's not able to make a play happen just yet. But so, SK still one turret up, still one dragon up, four kills up. And having that nice about 5,000 gold lead. It's just about how they kind of use this to their advantage. Because if they look at CS, I mean, look at that quote-unquote middle lane difference with Ocelot versus uh, XPK. 167 to 116. That is ridiculous. And we all know how strong an Oriana can be if she does not get put behind, if she's allowed to free farm like this. If she hits the shockwaves. That is also true. That is one thing it really comes down to. You know, a miss or a hit with the shockwave can decide if you go, th if you, you know, win a team fight or not. And we'll see how on form Ocelot is with that a little bit later on once we get towards that team fighting stage. Probably not going to be too far away as obviously those turrets have started to fall in here again. Uh, the current gold lead, 5,000 and a bit for SK Gaming. So looking very, very strong 15 minutes into this game. The question is though, can they hold on to it? And the funny thing is in that last, in the video we heard before this game, Fnatic admitted that, you know, some of the games that they've won against SK, they probably shouldn't have. They'd fallen behind. They were, you know, got a, a little bit too cocky or uh, SK got a little bit too cocky or didn't, weren't decisive enough and ended up losing those games here as so as. Oh, is he trying to bait them out? He doesn't know they're SK there, though. Said, you know what? We're not going to go for that. <laughs> it's back away smartly, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, we can all agree that Fnatic should not have won those games, but you always have Ocelot saying to us that just for some reason around that 40 minute mark, someone just seems to throw and we lose the game against him. But as you saw in that 60 minute game with four Barons taken by SK last time, they were able to pull that one out and expect it. He's going head to head against Kevin. Yeah, he is. He's putting down a lot of damage onto him. Got him to half with that one combo coming out. And that might be the key from SK, you know, if if that happens to them over and over at 40 minutes, don't let it go quite that long. That might be the key here uh, for them to actually picking up a victory. Uh, right now, Fnatic are pushing in on towards that top turret. Ocelot and Herkubot still, you know, sorting out that 
two-man roaming gank team trying to get in there on the action. They've not really been too successful with that one. Obviously, Soaz was there and was able to get away from them before. And something that I really would know if SK's fixed overnight is the fact that they played Lemonox yesterday, ended up losing to him, but the thing was, they shut down Zoro Zero, who was playing Rise in the top lane very well. But then they let him free farm. They let him catch up in CS completely. And he was also the key reason that they ended up coming back and winning that game. So has SK fixed that overnight? Are they going to let um, XPK free farm in the top lane? Because right now he's starting to catch up here in CS a little bit. Well, SK are looking for complete control of the map objectives here. And they're going for Dragon number two. S uh, sorry, Fnatic aren't really in a position to do anything about it. And that will be second Dragon of the game and 5,000 Goldie. But they need to reply since they can't lose that mid turret. It looks like they will be able to get there in time. I was actually expecting SK to maybe go for a fight, but unluckily for them, Yellowstar did have enough wars down the spot that happening, but still, that's two dragons being taken away, and Fnatic, they're even being counter jungles. You saw that one small rate, though. Let's look at the CS now. It's, it's 60, let's call it, between uh, Ryze and Orianna. So we'll see if they are able to stop XPK really farming himself back into this game. The difference between Elise and Lissandro is now pretty much bang even, so so has his lane switch there has really given him a little bit of time to work on that one. Between the two uh, AD carries, 135 to 149. So there still is a disparity, but actually, Pushu's done a good job of bringing that one back. It was looking to be a bit more severe earlier on. Yeah, and considering Candy Prana has that Blade of the Rune King done, that makes her 1v1 potential so much uh, so much higher. So he's definitely been doing a great job farming up. Staying range as much as possible with that Bloodthirst, they're going to be healing up enough. Not to mention Yellowstar's been giving some good support, but Cyanide, it looks like he actually did sneak in there, but... Kevin, actually, no, he no, didn't. Sorry, he was standing in the ward. His portrait was covering it, but Kevin did back away in time. And Parkupot going to get interrupted, and he's like, come on, really? You didn't even, you didn't even attack me. You're just going to cocoon me and walk away? Max range cocoon. Just be annoying there to uh, stop him from recalling. Right now, SK pushing down towards that. So it's taking a bit of damage, but not really much more than a tickling here. As we see Soaz going on towards Osla. There is a cocoon landing, but they'd already turned away. And now Herkubot's actually coming in from the side. I think he was itching to press Q and then and getting on top of him and kicking backwards into his Ocelot, but... I think he was yelling, ball, 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 ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> SK are really, right now, playing things safe. We saw that one earlier on where Soaz was you know, recalled in the mid lane and they were in the brush off to the side. Mm -hmm. And that's a kill that, you know, it's it, sometimes you'd see SK going for it. And they, they're bringing out an edgy kind of play style here that they obviously don't want to be making any mistakes now or later on in the game. Is XPK going to get in here on towards Kevin? The Rune Prison stopping him from getting away as he uses the ultimate. There's Cataclysm down. Don't think it was really needed, but it gets used, and that's a kill back for Fnatic. Kevin out of position. And more important, the kill goes over to XPK, who's already far behind, so he's going to get a lot stronger. But in the meantime, SK, they're pushing that bottom turret, and honestly, they should be able to pick this one up here, so that should take them three to one in turrets. But still, Fnatic holding on quite well right now, and a lot of big items coming in uh, as well. So the Rod Ages is done, that one's stacking up. The Abyssal Scepter done on a Soas, so it's going to make Ryze even stronger, since he doesn't buy the uh, Sword Boots, just to kind of get the extra longevity in the fights. And even the Haunting Guys, so Soas going for his patented Penetration build here. We'll, uh, we'll pick up the Sword Boots really soon here, but Yellowstar might get caught. Oh, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. That's a great crescendo. Here comes the Chain of Corruption, and they're going to go for the fight on this one. Yellowstar did go very low, but they've got the kill on to Nif. Peke picks that one up, and Fnatic are going to go hunting here. Cyanide going to get destroyed by the Shockwave coming out from Ocelot. Will they keep pushing over for this one? Wardo or from Soaz to check out the situation, and they decide to back off. That was such a great crescendo and follow-up by Pushu, but they weren't able to make anything happen. Now Herkio will be taking his damage here, but... Holy sin, he can escape pretty easily. So in the end, it was only a one for one, but honestly, it could have been like a zero for three for SK if Yellowstar didn't get that perfect crescendo off. Yeah, it was a fantastic crescendo saving them. No doubt about that one. So that leaves us at six to three in kills. SK still got sorry advantage. They've had both dragons up until this point. And they've got a gold advantage from that. I mean, the farm, we can check back onto it now. 180 to 240. So it's hanging still around that 60 CS. Marcus Peke going to catch Kevin out here once again. Already half of his health gone. And Peke is going to get altered in there by Kevin. Peke right now doesn't have a flash to really continue with this one. It's obviously going to get slowed by Kevin as he chases as well. And 
I think he's decided, should I keep going? Yes, he should, because there's a spider crawling its way up the river here, and Kevin now becomes in all kinds of danger. There is the push away from Kevin, and there is a repel to follow up from Soaz. Gets kicked away, but in comes Cyanide from the side. And while Herkubot is leasing, one of the reasons why we all love to hate him, that mobility is just too damn high. Oh, I don't love to hate him. I just plain hate leasing every time. But yeah, it was a good job for Kevin to escape there. Wasn't being locked down, but we just saw Xpeke's damage. I mean, in the fight previously, he didn't do that much, but in like one little bit of a combo, he got Kevin down to half health. So great job by them. He actually did go for his Archangel Staff uh, early before it was completed. But looking at items just really quickly, because there's like there's two key things I wanted to point out. Herkubot has his Aegis, so he's going to get that Runic Bulwark very soon, which means obviously he's going to have more magic resist for everyone on his team. But then you look at Candy Panda, he has his QSS done already. We saw last time in the game versus Lemonox, he went for his Blade of the Rune King, Azeal into a QSS. So this time, maybe SK wants to go for a fight soon, like some team fights happening right now, which is why they'd have these items a little bit earlier. Yeah, it's taking them ages to get that. I probably needed it earlier, like you said. Taking them ages to get that. Never mind, Jason. Went uh, straight Fre over the top Freak of Freak is head. making all of our puns <laughs> bad right now. Ah, yeah, so. Ah, uh, that QSS in there, as you said, <laughs> needlessly large rod. It's, it's all free. It took needlessly I'll too many eight. No, I'm done. It, it, it really is free to influence, bringing us down here in Europe. And uh, needlessly large rod in there as well for Kevin. So we saw those little 1v1s that he was having earlier on uh, with rise towards that top side. We'll see how that one all uh, starts to develop now that one's in there. The thing is, Candy Panda, you know, because he's not going in for that damage here. He's going to probably hinder him, at least at this point, but the fact is if he's dead anyway, then he's got no damage. So, <laughs> exactly. You know, it's, it's kind of a trade up there on that front. And the thing is, he went for his Silver Bolt to level first, so he's going to be doing, obviously, that percent true damage to whichever target hits three times, which right now, I mean, you look at Xpeke, you look at Sana, you look at Soaz, they're going to get very tanky very soon, so he has to have that damage. And I know SK sit on top of Ward, and this could be bad for them, but they're just waiting for that dragon to spawn. This one will be the third of the game for them. And it looks like Mag is just going to give this one away yet again, but they might actually push Miller here and try to get that turret in the meantime. Yeah, expect them to do something about this one, to be honest, because they've given away Dragon number three. This is one thing that they're doing. Rise, split pushing. Don't hear that phrase come out too often, <laughs> although, to be fair, the su most successful Rise we've seen so far have somehow managed to do it anyway. Obviously, Alex uh, is the one that really comes to mind in that game against Alternate, where uh, Pharrell Moore was away. I do manage to uh, stop that one from actually happening, but now he is slowly but surely, I say coming back in, he's, he's still hanging at 60 CS, so Ocelot is still making sure that he doesn't get caught up to, even if Ryze is still yeah. managing to farm. And that's the thing, like, Xpeke left that lane just so he could farm better, but he still hasn't closed the gap, it hasn't even really changed, and so it's also, he's aware of this, uh, like last time, or from the game yesterday against Lemadox, and that death cap almost done. Like, they've got to be going for a fight soon. Like, they have to be making some sort of play. But then again, last time these two teams met two weeks ago, we saw how hesitant SK was to go for a team fight, even though they had that advantage. It took them four Barons to feel confident enough to win the game. Four Barons is a lot of Barons, but something we've become used to seeing with some of these teams that, you know, and especially I think that the likelihood couldn't be quite high in a game like this where SK have said we've. You know, we've thrown it in the later stages of some of these games. And, you know, good old Baron is something that can certainly assist in that kind of factor. They're going to be want, they're gonna want to be very, very safe about pushing for a victory. And that's what's funny, is they have the most Barons taken out of any team in, in European LCS for the summer split, sitting at 10, which the next closest, I believe, is around 9 or 8. And the thing is, that might just all be due to the four Barons that got that game. But we've seen how many times the quote-unquote new bag draws teams in for a loss. Currently, SK pushing down that middle lane. Rise up at the top. Actually, XPK gonna have to recall from this one. The presence of pretty much Soas there, forcing them away from that one. And they decide, nope, we're not gonna go in for that one. And just gonna back off. It's 6,000 now, uh, or 7,000. Wow, my, my math is just incredible these So days. Freak's affecting our puns and our math. <laughs> no, my math always been oh, bad, okay. that's for sure. Uh, 7,000 gold is the difference right now that SK and Fnatic have uh, between them. And, you know, that is slowly but surely getting bigger. They're making sure that they get these dragons, which is, the you know, the key to adding on that thousand here and there uh, onto what they're doing. But the fact is, Fnatic can sit back and do a little bit of free farming yeah. now. Yeah, and that's what, I'm, that's what I'm thinking right now is, are SK waiting too long? We saw Meech Makers versus Lemadox two weeks ago where they had a 20,000 gold lead, 
and we're still hesitant to make some team fights happen. And they had 10,000 gold lead before, but the thing is, they let the game go on so long that Lemonix were able to farm back up. At SK, they might be doing the same thing with Fnatic. So it's like they're just going to ward up that Baron and back away. But all five members are technically pretty much grouped up here, so we might see a fight break out. Well, Fnatic are in mid, of course, that teleport of XPK can bring them straight back up into a fight. And there's a tidal wave coming over. He won't quite catch anyone there at the end. Yellow Star just getting out of the surf before he gets drowned. And, well, he stays safe from that. No fight, but there is a long range on it. It's not exactly the fastest moving of things. Yeah, it's kind of like a Magikarp splash. Doesn't really do much when you see it coming at you, but he's going to clear out the ward. He still has the Oracle, though, so it's like a battle of vision. And we have to point out, Yellow Star, when he first moved to support for Fnatic, he got caught out so many times clearing wards out. But we're seeing right now a completely different Yellow Star, where he's actually being a little bit more hesitant. He's not just running in there; he's waiting, you know, for his team to back up because he knows he is a crucial part to the entire combo of Fnatic. And if he dies, that will most likely be a lost fight for them. Yeah, he needs to get that crescendo off. That's you now. If he dies afterwards, okay. But <laughs> as long if as he, he gets, gets it off, the crescendo off, and in the right place, then pretty much done his job uh, for that fight and then it's up to the rest of his team to really be laying down all that damage. At this point now it's kind of a back and forth here. The fact that Byron has started to get a few uh, started to get a few more walls attracted to it to get that vision high and make sure they can see if there's any sneaky attempts coming in tells me that we're probably not too long away from seeing a fight around Baron. Uh, obviously for now his fights around wards. But right now, look at Xpeke, he's still pushing it. the bottom. He only has a 40 CS difference between Osla and SK starting this Baron up. No vision on it out of Fnatic here. And I'm not even sure they know what's happening. I mean, your CL start coming around, but they could just turn on very quickly. It's a two-man Baron. This, this is pretty risky from SK Gaming, but they're going to keep doing it. They've got that shield coming in. Cyanide comes around the side, and they know now what's going on. Nif is going to get rid of the pink ward. Candy Panda is still doing Baron. And I think they wanted to finish it off there, but they were like, no, do not do this. Do not risk that one. Just get away from it. We're not even going to play that game. And Fnatic come in, clear out a couple of wards of their own, and start putting some down. The thing is, what's so dangerous about both teams doing Baron is the fact that you're running double AP comp, and Baron gives you that magic amplification damage or debuff onto you. So if the enemy team engages upon you with a Rise, who surprisingly does a lot of AoE damage when he has an ultimate popped, or even for SK side, if they do catch Fnatic in there with the Orion ultimate and Kevin on his Lissandra, like their team is going to die. So both teams have to be very, very hesitant for this. And I wouldn't be surprised actually if you'd see the game finish without a Baron. Look at look at how things have gone since the last time I made a math mistake. It was 7,000 gold then, now 6,000 only. So, no, that gap has actually closed by 1,000 gold here in the last couple of minutes. As another turret actually goes down there, and that's just going to bring even closer mm -hmm. to this one. So, SK, no, they're, they're not that far ahead at this point and they need to be careful they whilst they've got an advantage and that's that's the the, the great uh, the the thing that makes you a great team you know realizing when you got an advantage and using it exactly and we're running into the thing of uh, as mentioned with demon yesterday is that the older teams that went to split versus the newer teams were the newer teams they're kind of like all right we'll play as if this is a scrim we're gonna play it there's no tomorrow i mean yeah if you make a mistake so what but we're not going to play too, you know, too cautious to pretty much lose a game. And the older teams, they kind of don't seem to do that anymore. And it can really make a game go either way, even if you have that, you know, that early lead, which they did completely have between Austin and Xpeke, where that CS gap has completely closed. The Spirit Visage now done for Xpeke. He is a tanky beast now. And it's going to be hard for SK to deal with him. But then you do have Candy Panda, who gets only stronger as the game goes on. Went for that Phantom Dancer with the QSS. So his damage will be pretty high right now. And it looks like they are poisoning for Baron again. Yeah, all those CS leads have gone yeah. for SK. I mean, look at the AD carries now. Pretty much bang even. It's gone from being 60 CS between Ryze and Orianna uh, to being a very close 40 at this point, with Ryze still doing a lot of pushing here. Is XPK going to get in on towards Nif? There's a tidal wave. XPK sidesteps it. Nif tries to predict for the bubble, but that didn't work out for him. Uh, but yeah, look at the top lane as well. Soaz is now actually 30 CS almost ahead. So that gap. It's very much closing, and Fnatic have just picked up a dragon for, but, for free. Yeah, Why? It, how? How? <laughs> how do you get a free dragon when it's been controlled by SK this entire time? They have the lead. They've simply given it away. Yeah, and they had, what, 7,000 gold lead? And within three to five minutes, it's completely closed down to about 5,000, or even actually, you know, 4,000. So the, the lead that SK had is slowly slipping away. Luckily for them, they do have a lot of major items completed, and... You can't let that mental block of knowing that you're one in 19 against Fnatic stop you, and I think that might be something that's affecting them. Well, both teams you can see are 
Uh, I mean, it's SK that are very stagnant at this point. They're you know, clearing out these waves that are being pushed back basically by Xpeke uh, and so as. And then they kind of default back to this whole, let's just wait in mid lane and for something to happen. Nif going to clear out a couple of wards, making sure that he doesn't get caught out there. He's Hercule bot. And you know, that's pretty much what SK have been sat on now for a good five or six minutes, maybe even a little bit longer than that one. But right now, they're actually going to Baron here, and they may start it off once again. They've got all five men there, but Fnatic aren't far away, even though Soaz is technically out of that fight. And this is that new bag. This has caused SK so many losses so far as Kevin just trying to zone sign out away. And it looks like they're just going to push middle here. So they're going to get another free turret and close that gap even further. I, for me, Fnat uh, SK needs to fight this one. I mean, that turret's going to go down. Look at Fnatic. They know that they're going to get fought here. And they decide just to back away. And SK, again, that's just a simple positioning win for Fnatic in that one. I mean, so as was down at the bottom, so SK was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's start Baron. But he comes up there, and because SK have not really committed to that Baron, you see him pushing straight through, taking mid tower. Peke, he's actually pushing the inner bottom turret, whilst on the top side, Vayne is actually coming for that one. Don't forget that Peke does have a teleport to get involved. They're going to trade it in the turret here. And they can just keep going, because the thing is, Ryze is such a slow split pusher in terms of getting turrets down, so if they want, they can go for this turret. And the thing that both teams are having the problem is trying to siege a turret down in a 5v5, because Fnatic, um, or for SK for Fnatic is that they have such a strong engage with the Crescendo, the, the Varus ultimate with Jarvan coming in, so they can't really siege away with, with a vein. But then again, for Fnatic going against SK, like they have the Tidal Wave, the bubble, the Orion ultimate, the Lissandra engage, and right now, SK took the foot off the pedal, and XPK is still punishing him for it. And, you know, he's actually doing decent amounts of damage to it as well. Yeah, okay, he's, he's no Twisted Fate or Casting <laughs> when it comes to hammering away at buildings, but he is doing a good job of that one in the end. They send back the AD carry, which for me, uh, a good idea on paper as well, just to get that farm re-rolling here, you know, so to speak, on uh, Candy Pan, who's now added that Phantom Dancer into the Blade of the Ruin King uh, QSS that he got earlier on. Looks like he's going in for that last Whisper as well. And we're in the exact same situation that they, they were up against yesterday versus Lemon Dogs. Like, Candy Pan, he hasn't been killed just yet. He has a nice amount of farm, but... Every minute they let slip by, Fnatic's been just taking more and more of an advantage against them, or at least clawing their way back in further. And I believe like the second or third Oracle we've seen on both supports here is just going to clear up that vision yet again. And both teams can honestly take Baron relatively quickly. It's just about them having, you know, for lack of a better word, just the balls to do it. Yeah, and that's... Uh... That's the problem here because this game means a lot to both, you know. Fnatic have just seen Gambit lose and thinking, well, we can actually catch up with them really nicely if we beat SK here. And obviously for SK, it's a completely different story because they're down at the bottom of yep. the table with EG. And they really could do with a win here uh, today as Yellow Star just stepping out a little bit too far. We already talked about that one in his first week. He was <laughs> thinking he was a little bit more invincible than he obviously was on paper uh, whilst clearing out wards. Uh, but we do see, uh, once again, that Peke continues to push his way up towards that inhib turret. SK have started off the Baron. Can Fnatic react to this Because one? SK has to punish uh, Fnatic for doing this. They have to punish that XPK is there, and we do see them taking some more damage, but they're going to be going for Baron here. It's already uh, relatively low right now, but the thing is, are they going to be able to finish it off? Will Fnatic be able to stop this here? And Sonnet, he's already making his move over there. Nip missed the bubble, but they do get the Baron. They managed to get Baron. This is big now for SK Gaming as we see them going on towards Soaz, he will actually flash away in the meantime. So um, XPK has taken down the inhibitor turret in that bottom lane. And he's going to put good damage through onto the inhibitor itself. If my eyes don't fail me, I think it's on about half HP there as we see that teleport coming. He goes back to a ward on uh, near his wolf camp. And that will be um, safe for now. But a good pickup after all for SK Gaming. And they've managed to keep the inhibitor alive. That's a big thing. Okay, they've lost the turret, which in itself is a massive deal. But mm -hmm. the inhibitor is still there. There's no super minions coming up. Yeah, this should be a sign for them just to push bottom. They need to stop XPK from constantly pushing that in. And they might decide to go for that here. Because now, with that Baron, they have the region. They have the damage to pretty much siege away at a turret. And it's just all about... Whether or not they're actually going to do it, push you double buffed up right now. Infinity Edge, Bloodthirster, last whisper. He hasn't even gotten his tier 2 boots yet, so he's going for some pure damage. He's kind of going Genja-esque with no attack speed on Varus. And now it's Peck. He's like, all right, you're going to push bottom. I'll go top when he starts pushing that. Yeah, it was pretty obvious uh, that was going to happen from XPK. Up to just less than 30 CS behind now. So 
That just shows, uh, goes to show how that one has changed. But look at Ocelot's items as well. Rabadon's Death Cap, Void Staff, uh, Fiend's Unholy Grail with the Haunting Guys and the Sorcerer Shoes in there as well. He's going to be doing a lot of damage. And we, we harped on a little bit about Shockwave and how it's going to be the, the all-important thing, which it probably still will be at the end. The funny thing is that we've not seen a team fight. Yeah. I was actually just going to point that out. We haven't seen one yet. It's just all about skirmishes and duels. And I don't know, with that Leandri's Torment done for Soaz, if he can keep harassing a little bit, he's going to do some good damage onto SK. As you see, Hercubot, that was, I believe, like two spells already taken down a good chunk here. And Kenny Penny's trying to go, he's trying to push into this turret here. They have Kevin on the side, so he's going to be the one to really engage over that wall. And if they get that ball in there perfectly, SK technically could win the game right now, because remember, we're 37 minutes in, death timers are extremely long, and all it takes is one good team fight to win a game. One good team fight, and Kevin off to the side, he's the man to watch here. This is very, very Pharrell and Lord S. We saw him come in from this position earlier on in the season and absolutely decimate his opponents, but will that happen here today? There's Nip getting caught out, Peke now on a killing spree, and that's simply because he had vision of him and he decided, you know what? I can get this guy down and run away before anyone can do anything about it. And they're the kind of opportunities that you can't give freely to Fnatic. And but now by killing Nif, they're pretty much backing away. SK's like, all right, we have Baron, but we still can't fight 5v4. And that Baron pretty much just meant nothing, SK. They didn't get one thing accomplished from that except taking it away from the possibility of Fnatic's grasp. And now Fnatic, they're going to go for Dragon here. So they're going to close this, gap, uh, this gold lead even more. And we're almost at a pretty much even game completely across the board, Joe. Yeah, and that's with that's with that Baron in there as well. I mean, it, it's really quite incredible how Fnatic have managed to keep a hold on to this one. I think it's partly to do with the fact that from there, the SK have been very, very wary of you know, where they're going to be pushing their advantages and how they're going to do that one. Fnatic challenging here for this Dragon. That's a, that's a Baron up team there that's walking away from that fight. They don't want to get involved with it. That shows how careful SK want to be about this whole game. There is a dragon going down, and that is less than 3,000 gold now. Two and a half thousand is sitting now. Not to mention, there's a lot of farm bot lane right now for them to pick up on top of that. And you do have Murtreads picked up for push shoes, so definitely not going for any attack speed. But both teams, like, I, I really wish I could just get into their mind and, and see what they're thinking, like, why they're not fighting just yet. What's stopping them? Because. You never see games go on this long without just some sort of team fight breaking out. But this turret, it will finally fall here as Pushu and Expecky are both out of position. But are they going to continue? They do have all five members here, uh, you know, finally. But that Baron buff is just taken away and all they've accomplished is that one turret. Well, it's still a fantastic pickup for SK at the end of the day. I mean, getting the second in a turret down. Yes, okay, they've, they've lost a, an inhib turret themselves. We're bang even now on the turret, so we'll have to see once this Baron's gone, which he actually now has just finally ticked off them, what they're going to be going for. You can see their vape, and although it's not so spectacular to watch a champion bomb creeps, you can see the amount of damage that's coming out and how quickly it's coming out. Last Whisper now added in there. And now, if Candy Panda manages to stay alive once we possibly see a team fight. We could, I suppose, see a game that ends without seeing a single <laughs> real team fight in it. Uh, and if we get to that stage, or when we get to that stage, I'm hoping, you know, he's got to be locked down here because he's going to cause absolute chaos for Fnatic. And speaking of damage, look at the items everyone has. Xpec almost has a full item build. Also almost has a full item build. You see Kevin, he's getting pretty close to it. You see Soaz almost has it. And of course, 80 carries are pretty much there. It's like everyone is going to have these six item builds without any team fights breaking out. And any gold lead you had or have or, or whatever doesn't matter anymore because it's all about the items. It's all about who could out team fight each other. I have seen our first person hit 400 CS here 40 minutes in, and that, of course, is Ocelot up to 406 now with that Oriana. Peke not too far behind him, though. That's 20, 30 CS behind uh, currently. And that seems to be the rate that he's settled for now. He's that, I don't like 60. We're going to halve that to 30, and I'll feel a lot better about it. Uh, and that's how he's pretty much gone about that one. Uh, this is going to be a blue buff steal here for Kevin. It went over to, I think. I can't quite see it. So, yeah, it's circling around in there. So that's going to be that one all sorted out. And it's all going to be about Baron number two. Pretty much, because, you know, you, you said it earlier on, SK, most amount of uh, Barons so far in the summer split of the LCS. Um, so, 
you can expect more than one Baron from them for, per game, and especially in this game, which just dictates the fact that we'll be seeing more than one, maybe yeah. even more than two in the long run. And the thing is that SK, like you said, they have the most Barons taken in the summer split of L our European LCS, but they're also the fifth slowest team at picking up the first Baron. So it kind of shows that if SK is going to win a game, they usually do it with multiple Barons. Like, they haven't really easily been able to win a game unless it's a stomp without that Baron bus. So Fnatic knows how important it is to them. They're going to actually look to contest it this time as they're just setting up wards everywhere, clearing out vision. And currently, SK doesn't really have any vision around it, and it's going to be up in 30 seconds. Well, let's see. This could be another case of SK being out positioned, but they've got the beauty of that middle lane is obviously they've taken the inner turret there. If, if Fnatic outplay them and say, okay, we're going to get Baron. SK with that can take at least the inhibitor down with it as well. So we'll see what they decide to go for. In the end, Fnatic, of course, don't have that Baron at their uh, leisure right now. It's coming up in five seconds. On the flip side of that coin of SK pushing middle after the Baron is that Xpeka, he has his teleport available. If he wants, he can go back to split pushing bottom. Uh, he can 1v1 pretty much anyone, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And they might be able to get a free inhibitor off it, so that would put SK away. And if they get a ward down onto Baron, he can just teleport in and join the fight. And that might be the plan that they're going to end up going for. Well, they're headed Baron side right now. And if, of course, Oracle to clear out, you can see a recall there from Peke. Not quite so significant because his teleport is up and available for use right now. Fnatic coming in around the side here. And this is this game is balancing on a knife edge right now. And you see Yellowstar, he actually picked up a Mikhail's Crucible. So he's going to be getting that you know free QSS basically to someone and the 15% of their max health as a heal. So depending on who he uses it on, it can really make make them pretty strong in a fight, but we do have SK, they're going for Baron here. It's already down to about 2,000 health, and they're going to get this for free. They are going to take that one for free. That's a massive pickup as they go in. They've managed to catch out Yellow Star here. Puts a good crescendo down, but he's dead. Ocelot picks that one up, of Chain of Corruption just stops them in the tracks there. Pretty much spreading all across the entire team for them. Uh, and, you know, that was all about disengage, really, from Fnatic. What they threw down, the crescendo, that Chain of Corruption, it was all about to stop them, uh, all about stopping them chasing in. But now SK have Baron number two. They've just won a decent team fight, and they're gonna look for in him, Torrance. And because of the way SK's been doing Baron, starting it, stopping it, not too confident, they just went straight for it. They just manned up like, all right, take it down right now. And you saw, Fnatic wasn't expecting that. They came in a little bit too late, and it cost them that, cost them that fight. But we do see the QSS actually used by Candy Panda, so Fnatic, if they wait a little bit longer, they might be actually go for a fight here. SK has to be very careful. If they lose this fight with the Baron, they're gonna lose at least one inhibitor. Yeah, but that was without a Shockwave from Ocelot as well. He did not use uh, Shockwave in that last battle, so we'll have to see. Now, that in itself, not just the damage, but the crowd control that's going to bring straight in there, dragging them all down, uh, is going to be a massive thing for SK. But it seems like Fnatic have actually done enough from this one to force SK away from now. I can't see Fnatic leaving their base and getting caught out by that bush because, well, why? Baron's down. They've got no towers really to push. The waves are pushed against them. I'd be very surprised if they went out that far right now. And you can see that they're actually going bottom side of the map here where that lane has been pushing. And it looks like Dragon just coming back up. They might be able to go for that. And also they might be able to push inhibitor uh, inhibitor down because they're going to have all their CC available here. But like I was saying before, SK, or, uh, Baron up SK in a five on five fight. They should have the advantage right now. But Fnatic, they're back to about a 5,000 gold deficit, but obviously it's going to be closed up here with this Dragon. It's going to be brought back a little bit from that. SK completely headed themselves home and there is the uh, shimitar picked up added in for Vayne. That's how you say it by the way with that cool accent. Let's see what he uh, can bring. So what item did he pick on. up Joe? Uh, a pickaxe, he's still got that one as well oh, after the... uh, finishing off his last <laughs> whisper. Uh, but here they are waiting here in the tri -bush and they're looking to catch out SK. This is something that obviously EG did in that famous game against Moscow 5 or Gambit as they're obviously now known. Uh, waiting around these brushes inside their opponent's jungle to just completely try and throw them off. But SK, they went with four men to secure a blue buff while they've got Drag uh, while they've got Baron <laughs> on. You know, they're not taking any chances here. They're not going to do that. The thing is, though, if they push out and Fnatic gets vision, they can just run straight up that lane and get the inhibitor. So SK has to be very careful where they do show themselves as a set of four men. Now they're like, all right, let's go five to red this time just to make sure, sure to secure it. Because right now, they know something's up. They haven't seen Fnatic in a long time. And Fnatic, I'm not sure how much long this is going to work out for them, but SK, they're going to push middle here, it looks like. And Fnatic, are they going to respond by pushing bottom? Because it might turn into a base race. Uh, it's going to turn into a base race. 
Well, Sona's recalling from this one. We see Herkimo, oh. Oslo, and if they're all going to recall, everyone's all back. Fnatic's recalling as well. And it's a big recall party going off in there. Actually, SK decided to stay a little bit for this one. They've still got four men actually there. That's uh, Alessandro just pointing a ward down towards the back. We'll see if they can actually finish off this turret. Pushu comes around, his piercing arrow is very, very painful at this point in the game. You can see him there hitting for around about 900 uh, on towards the minions. And in the end, what could have been an extremely exciting occurrence didn't occur. <laughs> yeah, I have, to, I have to apologize for getting people excited right there. You got me excited. I was, I was expected, and then they're like, no, nah, let's back away. We've seen how this can go wrong for teams, at some, or, you know, quite often. But we're going to go back to just farming up now, Joe. As you still have that 30 CS difference between Xpeke and Ocelot. And also almost has his items fully completed. It looks like Xpeke has his done. And everyone still just approaching that full six item build. And it's just going to come down to that one fight. That's all it really needs to be, just one advantage in a fight as long as you're not left with just one member you can pretty much take the game off this and sk they're being defensive for the first time in quite a while as fanatic was the one to push up and that baron it's gonna be done pretty soon actually it's already done yep. so now what did sk accomplish with the second baron fortunately nothing but still look at it this way they did take it away from fanatic having the possibility of taking so they did at least keep that in their favor that is definitely a plus point from their side. See the Zonia's really starting to uh, come down. Actually, Kevin had his Zonia's quite a while ago, which just makes him pretty much impossible to kill yeah. anyway, because of obviously how his uh, ultimate works in there. It's almost a mini Zonia's itself. We've got one over with uh, Elise with Soaz. We've got one with Ocelot's Oriana. Uh, actually, Rise, he's up at full six items. He might even end up selling Spirit Visage or something as we uh, go further in, although. Now with that double AP, it's always a nice thing to have that extra big chunk of magic resist coming out. Yeah, and SK right now currently have half the amount of parents they had in the last time these two teams met. I wonder if we're actually going to hit four again, but they are going to go for a push bottom here, trying to get this turret, but now with the presence of Fnatic, it looks like it's enough to push them away. Or is it? That ball is basically the thing that's scary here for Fnatic. And I think for me, that's an, uh, one of the annoying things about Orion that you don't just have to look at the positioning of the team. You've always got to keep your eye on the ball because uh, if you go in a wrong position, you're in trouble. And we see right now SK trying to use positional advantage to get in onto that inning so they're taking it down to half. But Fnatic, they've got back around and it's still hanging on. And with Baron coming up momentarily, it looks like SK are just going to wait for that to come up, then go for another push here. But that was a good job by them. I mean, they pushed bottom for a an, an, uh, bottom inner turret and then ended up getting more damage onto the inhibitor turret. So it's taking, oh. wow, a lot of damage right there. And that is not a good side for him. No. Vein hurts. <laughs> There's no doubt about that one. Candy Panda is a painful thing right now. It's actually flank coming down on top of him. That was from uh, Cyanide just at the back of that tower, and they didn't quite manage to get the finisher there. So if we're talking about important towers down at this point, Fnatic actually have the edge on that front. They do, but unfortunately for them, they they don't feel he or they don't feel confident enough to leave their base. They've been just pretty much defending for quite a while right now. As it looks like SK can go for a little bit of split pushing here. As you see Kevin's damage able to full clear away by himself very quick with two spells. And looks like this will be a turret finally, which feels like in the last. 10 minutes, we haven't had one turret go down, and just as I say that, leave it up with a little bit of health. One more hit. The ball can't do it, Ocelot. And neither can Candy Panda, apparently, <laughs> trying to get in there. It's just so tempting to just walk in there and get that one down, but Fnatic, you can guarantee, Cyanide in particular, ready and waiting to throw his combo and knock you up. As this next minion wave comes in, SK surely going to be taking down the third and final inner turret. There we go. One final hit is all it took, because we are going to see Kevin coming in. Oh, they flashed away from it, though. Chain of Corruption's gone down. Kevin taking a lot of damage there, but Fnatic not really all on the same page there. And they kind of half went in, half went out, and then back in, and it was a bit of a mess overall, but no kills resulting from it. Baron has now spawned. This could be the next target for SK. And they're going straight for it. They're, like, barely down. They're trying to actually bait Fnatic in with a... Luckily for uh, Yellowstar, he put a ward down over that, over that wall just to spot them, and... Obviously, they can take it very quickly. They've done that before. And right now, Fnatic has no ward coverage of this. But are SK going to bait this, or are they going to go straight in for it and take it fast? It's up to them. They are going to actually give away the control of it. But and it looks like Fnatic was just trying to maybe rush down middle, get the inhibitor, because they could just run straight bottom right now while SK tries to do Baron and finish the game before, or at least get the inhibitor down before SK can get back. And that just shows, you know, how 
wary SKR at this point. And then look how far they backed away from that completely. They had complete vision control of that side of the map. And right now, Yellow Star has been allowed to get in there, to clear out, to get wards down on Fnatic Zone. And SK are trying to bait this decision. So as we are going to see the flashing on towards Xpeke. He gets ulted up. There's the Zonia's being used. And Ocelot is going to shut down Xpeke. And SK are going to push it. And that might have been the move that SK was waiting for because now the rest of Fnatic will be backing away. They're going to be able to get this turret down, which is already low from earlier, and the inhibitor, but are they going to continue to do more? They have over 60 seconds on XPK before he comes up. They have a huge advantage for a 5 on 4. And what are they going to go for here? It looks like they're backing up, to be honest. And we'll see if they do go for the Baron right off of this right now because they have a huge advantage in this team fight. XPK does have teleport, though. And SK, they're not 100% healthy, but with the damage they have, but with no Oracle, I would not be surprised if they're really hesitant to go in for it. Yeah, and, and rightly so, you know, we talk about this uh, these kind of long, drawn-out games where teams are, you know, very critical or, you know, critically play uh, in terms of no mistakes. That's what we're aiming for. Uh, and SK here, when you play in that play style, you, you're not going to go for a Baron when you've not got an Oracle on your team and you can't clear out the vision that the, op uh, the, the opponents have got, even if you've got a one-man advantage. Nif did go back, has bought himself an Oracle, and he's going to be getting back into the game as well here. So they'll start to clear all that one out. Cyanide himself is actually just on the Baron itself right now as he puts a pink ward down. That will probably get lost here, but Ocelot, they're going away from this one. Oh no, they've decided to come back. That was a, a good decision from SK to stop that recall happening. Fnatic see that SK are there, and they've decided to back off themselves. Very, very tense point of the game. Something's gonna break here. I'll take a look at Yellowstar's items. They haven't changed in about 10 to 15 minutes. He's been just buying wards up as much as possible, and you see it reflected in the amount of vision that they had around the Baron, but now SK, they're not spotted right here. They might go for the gauge. However, Xpeke, he's on the bottom side of them. The rest of Fnatic are pretty much... Wow, that was, a, sorry, that was a lot of damage. That caught me off guard how much it did. But it looks like all Fnatic are going to group up here. And SK, are they really going to back away and go stop this top lane, which is pushing on their inhibitor turret? I, I think it could be a mistake here. Lissandra leaving is a massive... Once she's spotted, this is going to be bad. It's massive amounts of damage and a, and a fantastic ultimate to come out of it as well. But Fnatic decided not to go for it. They saw Lissandra up there. And right now, they're just trying to hold SK back from it. And they do have Super Mains pushing down middle right now. They're going to be on those Nexus turrets very soon. And the thing is, because of where they are, they're gathering all the minions, and they're actually going to be killing them one by one. Xpeke, he's the one to back away. He's the one to take those down, because he has that teleport up. But Fnatic, they're tangoing around the Baron right now. This is incredibly tense right now. The team wanting to make any kind of mistake that could, you know, potentially throw the game from him. SK have been in a position like this before. We're 54 minutes into this matchup. And the PSC narrow comes through. SK get the ball over the top. See that Fnatic are retreating. They're stood on a ward themselves, though, and they'll realize that there as Nif is able to clear that one out. And now they start to push through to that middle lane. Of course, there's no inhibitor in that lane. Super minions have already started to come through. And you just know, Joe, I mean, I, both of us are sitting here waiting for it. There's like a snap of the finger, and this game is going to be over. Like, a fight is going to go extremely quickly because of everyone's items. And Nephi's going to go back here to Baron. He's going to clear all the vision. And Fnatic, are they going to give up their third Baron of the game? Are they going to try to stop this one? Is SK even going to do it soon? Well, hopefully, we're going to find out here in a couple minutes. That would have been a nice time for them to do it. Nif was nowhere near. Uh, sorry, uh, Yellow Star was nowhere near. And they are going to kick things off. Cyanide is at the back though he's got his flag down in there sk they're still doing baron here cyanide is actually going to go in they stopped doing baron but look at that he's been pushed over the wall sk managed to get baron and they've taken down cyanide are they going to push in here to finish this game so as is off to the side if they can just land that single q in on him here herkubot will be able to do all the damage and lock him down from this one he jumps over towards his minions q does land but he's a bit far away from his team for that to happen but there's a minute until cyanide comes back in this could be it for SK. And they're going to be pushing out with these super minions here. Candy Panda breaking off, trying to go catch. Expect, actually, no, he's pushing the top, and they're going to go for another inhibitor turret here, and that will be theirs for free. They already have some good damage onto it, down about half up with Fnatic. Oh, the way they were staying that right there, I was maybe expecting them to all flash over that wall and just go for a fight, but they still have a lot of CC on their side. Like, it's not over yet for Fnatic. They have a lot of control. Pusher needs to go back, needs to get his mana back. He needs to get his ultimate up as well, which is on quite a bit more cooldown. 
Yes, okay, still being hesitant to actually go for that tower, and they're going to be going for it here, Joe. Or back and away with the next mini wave. One of the two. That claw of doom from Kevin coming in is always a thing that Fnatic are going to be scared of. You see him back away every time that's thrown in there. That will be a turret going down, though. Inhibitor should probably follow straight after this. I can't see Fnatic being able to put up too much of a defense. Obviously, they're going to try and poke out, trying to land the cocoon to Candy Panda. Sinai's going to come in with home guard boots. They might actually try to go for a fight here because they've been they managed to hold on to that inhibitor. Oh, I was so expecting that because they can't afford to let this one go. Letting two go is so hard to come back from that I don't believe any team in uh, European LCS has really been able to do so far. And they've been able to hold on to it. Their middle inhibitor has your spot, but here comes SK. They're going to go in on towards Kevin. Cyanide taking a lot of damage, but crucially not going down. Soaz going to go low. He will be finished off as a shockwave hits Pushu at the back. Candy Panda's managed to pull him off. And now they're going to rip Riot here through Fnatic. Uh, Peke is in all kinds of trouble. He's going to flash away. Even gets condemned away as Herkubot chases down Cyanide. Didn't quite finish him there. He's still got vision of him, though. So he's going to keep going through for that one. Inhibitor in the mid lane has actually been finished off. They're going to be pushing on towards those Nexus turrets right now. The first one is going to fall. Xpeke and Yellowstar both coming around the side here. Yellowstar thrown up into the air by the bubble. Can SK finish this one off? Candy Panda hammering away on the Nexus. He's taking a lot of damage but he condemns Xpeke back. Keeps hammering away and he gets killed off finally here with a Nexus falls and SK are going to beat Fnatic for the second time here in as many weeks. It was a long, hard game for them 57 and a half minutes in the end but it doesn't matter if it's over in 10 or 100 it's a win that SK Gaming were desperately needing coming into today and I guarantee Asa's looking at it like yeah we're 2-0 against Fnatic that 19-2 but that was still really well played both teams really won that victory as you saw throughout the entire game just how long it lasted how hesitant both teams were being and look at SK, like they are so happy. Their faces, their grins, their smiles, they feel so good to come out with a victory on that one. Yeah, and look at Fnatic as well. It's, you know, it was a long, hard game for them anyway that they were behind in for a long time. So I think it's kind of easier to take that kind of defeat where you've held on for so long. And, uh, you know, it never really, uh, and there were times where it started getting closer, but there wasn't a, a massive chance there for uh, Fnatic where you would have said, oh, if they didn't just hit that one spell, if that, you know, if Ryze would have caught that person out or if Push you would have focused someone different in that fight, there was none of that. It was just a case of SK taking a little bit longer, really, to execute what they was almost rightfully theirs, the way that they build that one up. So, you know, as I said, a much-needed win for them. It's going to be another massive confidence booster for SK. Yeah, I like how you point out Fnag. I mean, they looked happy. It wasn't like they are really down themselves. I remember after DreamHack on the bus back to the hotel, I was talking to Nif because he was really down that day because obviously SK wasn't doing good in the first week. And I was asking him, you know, is it harder on you to lose a game in a landslide, like you get stomped, or a game like this, where it's really close down in the end? And he said, the games like this, he enjoys more, because you, you don't look at, look back at it like, what, what would have happened? It's the games that are stomps that really kind of affect you. So both teams, you know, pretty happy about it. They played extremely well, and it's just that one, that one little catch, that one little mistake that can win you the game 50 minutes in. Yeah, I mean, we saw that game was pretty much all about 1v1s and tiny skirmishes, you know? There was... Very little when it actually came down to to team fighting. Apart actually, from, I think it was just that that was that was the team fight we saw. Yeah. There was only one. It was at the end. It was uh, it yeah. was definitely not the the most team fightiest <laughs> of games. That's a real thing, ladies and gents. Uh, but yeah, a really strong win for SK. That's obviously going to give them a much needed boost down at the bottom, not in terms of confidence, but in terms of their actual position. Mm -hmm. However. EG going to be playing later on, and that puts even more pressure on EG to actually come out and perform. Yeah, because if they lose that one, they will be pretty much solid. Well, they currently are solid 8th place, eighth yeah. place, obviously, but then you have to look at it as, man, we have a lot of games to win if you want to get to those top six. It's all about the World Finals. EG was there last, last year, so was uh, SK, so was Gambit, and all three of these teams, I mean, you have to look at it week in, week out. Are they going to be able to accomplish what they, they honestly probably feel like they should be able to? Well, who knows? The league is so close right yes. now that even those guys at the bottom could end up by uh, the top by the end of it. And that's the beauty that we've got right now in the season. But that's it from us. We'll be back, obviously, a little bit later on. But well, we're going to head over to Freak for a breakdown of that game. Thanks very much, guys. So, of course, we're going to break down that very last team fight, the only real team fight of this game between SK Gaming and Fnatic. And basically, I want to point out how good the initiation is uh, from Kevin's Lissandra. Basically, 
uh, their team is so good at starting a fight and creating so much chaos that Candy Panda's Vayne gets to pretty much rock everyone. Let's get this quick replay up on your screen and notice basically the initiation power and how much they screw with uh, Peke's Rise and so as is uh, Elise in this battle. Let's roll it out and watch what happens here. So battle comes in. Here comes Lissandra and she's going to jump right in, stop Sinai from engaging and they actually lock him down right off the bat. On the left hand side, look at Soaz. Soaz is not going to do anything at all the entire fight. Now there's Peck on the right hand side. He's now alone. He's the only guy left able to deal any damage. Sure, he's tanky, he's right, he's got a lot of durability. They leave him for last, actually. They get the free kill on the Assassin. They remove Sider from the fight early on. Of course, he goes in the back line and eventually gets chased out. And so uh, that's pretty much it for the clip here. But SK have such good initiation that they don't let any of the damage output actually come through for Fnatic, which allows them to just clean up the fight. Again, Candy Panda's Vayne being a really big deal on that one. So incredible job by SK, and congrats on their win, giving them their second win against Fnatic finally in about three years' time. But that's